Okay, this is Mini Art's new Austin Armored Car, the third series. Uh, Mini, uh, Mini Art has been putting out some pretty cool stuff. Uh, oddball, off the wall stuff that you don't see very often that for most of those modelers, definitely it's new. Um, their new kits are really, really nice and rival some of the uh, the more advanced kits out there from Tamiya and Dragon. They're really putting a lot of effort into their new stuff, which is really cool, and I like what they're doing. Uh, this kit says comes uh, with full interior, and uh, let's take a look inside. You can see there's a shrink wrap package with all the uh, styrene parts. I actually got this imported from Eastern Europe. So the instruction manual is really nice. It's got pictures of some of the different vehicles you can make, decals for it. I picked this one because I kind of like some of the markings. Um, it's a full booklet. It's super nice. With very nice uh, illustrations. And instructions look pretty good. I like the way they shaded uh, these areas so they don't all blend in together in the instructions like on a lot of other kit instructions. This is really cool. pretty detailed kit. Uh, the instructions look like each section is pretty well thought out and illustrated so it shouldn't be a trouble putting it together. It looks like a lot of steps but each step only has a few parts to put on. So I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. Here's some more, some more drawings. And at the end, you've got some uh, advertisement for other really nice kits they're putting out. So let's take a look at some of the model here. As I can see right off, we've got the decals right here on top. You get your decals and some clear parts. Those are nice. And then you've got a little envelope with the photo etch pieces in it. And here are the photo etch pieces. Very nice. This sprue showing some of the parts for the uh, cab, and then this is this is interesting. You've got wheels, wheels and tires. It's like a couple different um, types here. I guess once I get into the kit. I will see more about it. So there's some more small parts. Machine gun. So stuff for the turret. So from what I'm seeing, everything is really nicely molded. Um, I see a little bit of flash here, but it's not anywhere visible that I can see on any of the parts. They look very clean. It's more on the outside armored cab. Tires. A 
light, the headlight, and some more small parts for look like suspension, and some really tricky parts here, very thin. So you'd have to take your time taking these off the sprue, cutting them out. Very thin, thin plastic. Other than that, this kit looks really, really good. So I'm really interested in starting this one. When I can finish my diorama, I've had the figure still to paint. But anyways, really nice kit. I can't wait to work on this. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to come out really cool. So, anyway, this is a Mini Arts Austin Armored Car, and it was this was one of the first releases that they made of this uh, particular armored car. Now they have a German and British, and I think a couple other flavors, and uh, those are really cool as well. I've got some really neat paint schemes on those. The, the British is like a three-tone. Looks really, really nice. Um, but this one's cool, and I really enjoyed the build. It's a very detailed kit. Very detailed. And I've talked about these compared to Tamiya. Tamiya, I guess, have been, they've been making armored vehicles and models for a long time. When I was a kid, in the early 70s, they had their model kits, and I started on their their first kits, and uh, they have definitely changed, but even the ones back then were engineered very nice. And when I say that, this kit is very detailed, uh, excellent detail, but to me, it knows when to add a detailed part compared to when you have to add it, and that actually makes the models look better when you don't have to fool around with little tiny stuff that's not going to fit really great or go on or fall off break um and the way they've engineered their kits go together really well i wish mini art would do a little simplicity in their engineering of the way the uh, kits go together and man that's going to put them there with hobby boss and tamia um Dragon is a little like that too to me. They, they've got a lot of little parts that they just seem a little bit overdone uh, to glue on and then in, in assemblies where you don't even see them. And I know a lot of modelers like that. I get it. I mean, you want to build a detailed model and you want every rivet and bolt to be there. I have no problem with that because that's what some people really like. I like the finish. To me, it's all about the, the finish of the model, how you paint it, weather it, display it, uh, markings, accuracy of your research, that sort of thing. But that being said, this kit uh, was spray paint, painted all black with my quick color flat black can spray paint. And then over that, I mixed a uh, armor dark yellow with a olive color until I got this color that represented the illustration in the instruction book for this Polish vehicle. Um, the artwork on the cover of the box has the, um, I guess like a target looking marking blue and yellow, which a lot of people use it seems like I want to do something different so I had to use this Polish marking um, but I got the color pretty close and I, I, I have to say it a million times I never spray a model monotone I don't want it all one color never never I want it to be shades of the color but never exactly on the final piece and I always go darker to lighter that's the most important thing um, a monotone kit just sprayed monotone one color and even tried to weather it just uh, looks a little too toy like to me it doesn't have any depth it doesn't have any life it looks monotone <laughs> anyway so that being said um, oil wash on this one 
and a little bit of uh, on the top here decal um, I'm sorry and on the top here the terpenoid mixed with some art, uh, artist pastels and you can see those in my other videos mm. just put on top just to give it a little bit of a, a dusty look on top um, there's some pastels rubbed into the tires and they had plastic tires that came in it. it actually came with a couple uh, I think two different sets of tire designs depending on which markings you you were going to go with the Maxim machine guns painted field gray and then this light here is done the way I do a lot of lights I'll put a piece of aluminum foil cut out inside pressed in and then I will cover the hole for the lens with either crystal clear um, glue, or in this case, I used two-part epoxy because I had some, and it came out okay. Um, it's not probably the best, but uh, I'm okay with it. It gives it a shiny, light look, so I'm okay with that. I didn't detail the bottom of the kit, so I'm not going to show it to you. It's just painted flat black. Um, the kit comes with really nice markings. This is the Polish markings, and there's not very many. <laughs> it's just the sides, nothing on the front, and just the sides on the doors. But I, I really like all the rivets. You know, whenever you get to build an old armored kit that has lots of rivets, bolts, etc., you're really going to get a, a cool weathering effect for those, and the model's going to stand out. I recommend this kit, but I don't recommend it to someone who's just starting out. If you've been building a lot of models, fine. Um, there's definitely a lot going on here. And if you've got to really look at the instructions, plan your attack. Uh, a lot of times you can't go exactly by the instructions. Um, that's a lot of reason why I build everything and paint everything afterwards. If I can't, I mean, that being said, uh, there's sometimes I have to leave parts off, wheels, uh, other parts off, and then put them on afterwards. But my rule of thumb is if I can see it, I paint it. And the weathering process ties everything together. But I really like this vehicle. Uh, I would recommend it for advanced modelers. It's a, it's a good kit, good representation. It's detailed well. And it looks really nice once you finish it. I'd like to do some of the other ones. I always say that. I look at them and I'm like, oh, do I really want to build another one of these? Um, so maybe one day, who knows? I do a lot of kits over and over again just to get better at them or, or change them. Or I feel like I can, I can do better, so I'll build another one. And this could be one, but we'll see. That being said, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate everyone who subscribed so far and watched my videos, so stay tuned for more content.